welcome to Furious Driving, and today in this video we're going to do the final tasks left, getting this Rover 200 Vi back on the road. There's only two things really stopping it getting MOT, a CV boot and a brake caliper, which is not that much really. And I know it seems like we're doing a lot of repetitive work on the channel at the moment. This is the third car I've bought recently. This needed a brake caliper. The Crown Vic needed a caliper. The Touring needed a caliper. And now this needs a caliper as well. So hopefully I'll be well practiced and can buzz through that in no time. Famous last words. Right, let's see if we can get this thing ready to drive at last. Driving, And today we're doing some more work on the Rover 200 VI. Well, I say we, it's just kind of like the royal we because after the last episode when I said that all I needed to do to the car was change the CV boot and the brake caliper, um, and I was gonna use the weird plastic cone thing. My friend Chris here, who you may remember from Quentin having his cam belt changed in the car park when I ran out of power tools that were powerful enough to do anything to that car. Well, he's back again. He messaged me almost as soon as that video went up with all the laughing emojis in the world saying you and that cone thing it's not going to happen chris is a mobile mechanic this is literally his job and he knows what he's doing and he couldn't laugh hard enough at the thought of trying to do this car with that cone in this driveway he said don't worry i've got a special tool i'll come and give you a hand and here we are the big hammer's already out Rover. It's a rover, therefore it's rusty. Right. You're an even bigger stick. I have got a bigger stick. <laughs> I call this one my toothpick. <laughs> it gets to bits that you can't do normally. Yeah, but when you really need to persuade stuff. I've got a metal bar for <laughs> so I'm going to lay down this. There we go, so that is the uh, bottom, ball bottom ball joint <laughs> detached. Barely took a lump. So what we do under the bottom ball joint, now hopefully we can swivel the hub away enough to detach the uh, drive shaft. That was undone when the car was on the ground, now using a massive impact. Dugger. Dugger, dugger. That's a proper dugger. <laughs> got a bigger one than that as well. <laughs> this is the no messing equipment. I'm kind of glad Chris is here because, you know, as much as I like doing these jobs in the driveway, sometimes I just want to get in the car and drive. Oh, this is the extra gloves because it's going to be really disgusting now. Got to get your red chinas on. Oh, yeah. So this is going to be pretty disgusting. I've seen people take this apart with Dremels and all sorts. I have got one. Yeah. Well, multi-tool. Yeah. These are actually good clips. Yeah. Rather made, than the... Uh, <laughs> made short work of that. Cable ties which people normally try. Not enough flex on it. There we go. Off it comes. And cut the other one off. Yuck. This is one of the most disgusting jobs to do on a car. I know, I was looking at the, all the grease and the dirty old grease and you, you can smell it through the screen. Mm. You and your manicured fingers. I know, I can't, can't get these things dirty. <laughs> <laughs> My piano recitals will never be the same. I had hands like that once. <laughs> After a two week holiday. <laughs> Boom. Boom and off. Boom and the work is done. Yeah. That is properly manky. Now what you've got to be careful with when you do this apparently is not to pull the thing. Otherwise, all the oil falls out of you <laughs> all over the drive. No gearbox oil in the gearbox. What a mess. Oh, that's nice and tight, so that's good. Obviously, it's only just started to split, so, yeah. you know, sometimes they're absolutely knackered. I've got a feeling it's very split through, like, lack of use, like an old tyre. Yeah, and then, just perished. Yeah. Because the car's been sat around quite a lot the last year or so. Look at that 
That's disgusting. Right, rather than using the cone, which is, you know, not, not definitely going to fail, but certainly going to cause me no end of hassle, we've got this thing, which is designed to cripple aliens. If you need to probe something, this is what you probe. It's probing time. That's some stretch on that thing. Wow, I need one of them. Or to never do this job again, one of the two. <laughs> you don't need one of them, you just need my phone number. Yeah, I'll just ring Chris in the future. That is like 10 seconds instead of like an hour of arguing with it. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, if you do them, you need it. Yeah, definitely. Oh, look at that. Ooh. Lovely. Give us motoring happily for many, many moons to come. It's only one of those envelopes. Yeah, yeah, oh, you okay. don't need all the grease. Obviously, this wasn't bone dry inside. No, There's true. an amount of grease left in. If you're going to take the CV joint end off, then pack one in to start with before you put the joint back oh, on the okay, shaft yeah. and then just pack the other one around it. I might put trim this down a bit because it's a bit too long. Yeah, so you can cut these down to make them a bit easier. If it's only a so little... I can cut it with my little sign cutters. Oh. Oh, hey man! Okay, she raw. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, you've got too much. Yeah, too much carry over. Yeah. Flippity flappity. Yeah. In a minute, we'll cut the end ring off this because it's just a little bit long. Let me clamp this thing over, pinch it up. Jobs are good. We're not going anywhere. You have to give it two pats when you say that, otherwise it's not guaranteed. That's <laughs> <laughs> no, not going anywhere. Pull that round as far as you can, get it into the furthest hole you can hook it into before you pinch it up tight. So there we go. Junior hacksaw, apparently the uh, big stuff isn't worthy of this job. It doesn't really matter what it looks like. Well. No, exactly. It's hidden behind the back of the hub. So. <laughs> as long as the ABS works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so if you're doing this, don't think it can rotate the shaft rather than trying to lie underneath it and cut it upside down. There we go. Fitted CV boot. That only took about 10 minutes. That's amazing. There we go. Snuggle that back the through the hub. Free. Fit it in better. Oh yeah. Let's turn it for you. There we go. Now finagle that back into the. In it goes. First time. Well, hey, bada bing. I've done this before. It's almost like you know what you're doing. Okay. This one of those ones where you've got to, it's not actually long enough to put the bolt on top once it's in place. Yeah, and the nut's just too deep, it rubs on the shaft. Yeah. <laughs> it's a castle nut, so you've got to line that up. Oh, yeah. Is it a split a pin split in there? Pin hole? Do you use a new split pin or were you? I have new split pins. Oh, you're so prepared. Big dugger. Dugger. It's not dugger. 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 That's about five duggers. That's quite tight. Here we go. Flatten off a different surface so it can't undo. We'll cut that. Such an amateur. <laughs> Do you know what you're doing? 
done. It's dug in. Bada bing. Here we have one rebooted CV. Splendid. Thanks, Chris. There we go. So whack the split pin in and Robert Chivaro's brother, we are done. Right, well, Chris made short work of the CV boot. That was done in under an hour. I've never seen one done so fast. Uh, secondly, Bulldog BDX made short work of taking the brake caliper off the Tura, which is behind the camera right now. So can we do a combination of that and use Bulldog BDX to make short work of this caliper here. And this one came from Rimmer Brothers. Genuine MG Rover item, apparently. Not remanufactured, apparently new, who knew? It wasn't packaged in anything, so I don't know, maybe it's not. But anyway, it looks identical. Hopefully five minutes work. How hard can this be? Why did I say that? Right, that is now soaked. I've given it just long enough to go and make a cup of coffee. Incidentally, if you point your browser towards www.furiousdriving.co.uk, there is now a web shop which currently accepts PayPal payments, but should do credit cards as soon as I've finished in the paperwork on that. So you can go and buy all kinds of exciting and fun furious driving and car related stuff, which is growing I'd say by the day, but by the, by the month. I'm not that quick at doing this kind of thing. Right, so thing I learnt from the uh, Tourer, because I'd forgotten to do it previously, is to slacken off that one before you get going on everything else, because otherwise you have got yourself a problem with a very well welded Oh wow, blimey, that's not even particularly tight. Well, it is, but the Bulldog just does the trick. Incidentally, this thing it's from Draper. It's like an Omega tool slot thing. I went through an entire afternoon sorting all my sockets that were just random piles of sockets in various boxes into this one big thing. I need to get another one of these, one for Imperial and one for Metric. It's just made my life so much easier than scrabbling around. Oh my word, these just are winding off. I'm amazed. I'm genuinely amazed. That is stunning. I've never had such an easy time of this. Bulldog, aren't sponsoring this video, but I love you. Please send me more cans of this stuff, it's brilliant. Now we'll talk briefly about brake discs and the condition thereof. A couple of people commented repeatedly, actually quite a lot of people commented, oh those brake discs on the back of the Tourer look really shabby. They didn't look that bad at all in person, they looked worse on the uh, video than they did in reality and the thing is I think the caliper on the back of the Tourer hadn't been working on the outer disc for quite a long time so um, that's why the front edge looked quite sort of rusty and pitted once it's been driven on a short distance which it now already has it will be just sorting itself out quite happily um, meanwhile this one there's a bit of a lip on this but I'm not changing these discs and pads because I want to uprate these brakes because the Rover 200 series was notable for its rubbish brakes. And I won't do it today because I haven't got any money. Um, so, but in the very near future, I will be adding on some far more uprated, more fun things to make this thing stop a bit, bit better. And these brake flexies look quite good. And I actually went to the barn yesterday to go and get some stuff. A couple of people bought t-shirts off the Furious Driving website and they're all stored over in the barn. I had to go and get the, get the t-shirts. Um, I didn't know yet. The clamping tool for a brake flexi hose. Because I'm an idiot. That should do the trick. And that was a 14, wasn't it? And this is just basically winding out pretty much. is going to dribble. Let's get a rag underneath it. Yeah, look at me saving my driveway from mess for probably the first time and only time ever. There you go. Oh, damn it. That's all falling horribly out of the uh, old caliper. In the bin with you. Right, new caliper, here we come. I'm surprised there wasn't any kind of return for refurbishment option with the um, Remmers caliper. I'll have to wade that one in. 
I've got the other one from the uh, the Crown Vic to weigh in as well. And that thing weighs an absolute ton. I and mean, this is like a baby caliper. This is a caliper for, for children's toys compared to the Crown Vic's one. Oh, what is the phone always ring when I'm doing this? Blurge on the back of the pads just to make it a little not squeaky. Ah, whoops. Oh, people are going to comment, I shouldn't let this hang on the cable now. Oh, no, don't hang on the cable. Don't worry, it's fine. It's for two seconds. There we go. Now, interestingly, Rimmer Brothers was slightly cheaper for a genuine article than JR's were for the remanufactured item. I'll put the camera back on the tripod again. But the remanufactured one from JR's came with all the rubber bits and everything to replace. Whereas this, well, clearly didn't. Here's got flat sides and round sides, need to get them rotated correctly. Now, looking at the colour of the brake fluid that came out of this, this does want a full bleed. However, just having looked in the garage, I've got that much uh, brake fluid left in a bottle. So that's not going to happen right now. I'll save that for another day. An exciting future video can be uh, doing that, that particular business because, yeah, it's bank holiday. And I'm not going anywhere near the shops on a bank holiday. Let's talk this down to the correct spec. Click. Click, yep, double click. Because, yeah, you should never double click actually. Um, click. Click. Right, let's go see if Furious Junior has bothered to get dressed and I can get him to go and help me bleed the brakes. That's the problems. Where's the spanner gone? What the what? Hang on. There was an 11 millimeter spanner here two seconds ago and it's vanished. Is it over there? No. No, that's 10 millimeter. So where's the 11 gone? The one by the camera. Oh, this one here, yeah, I was kneeling on it. <laughs> right, so Furious Junior is in the car complaining about the lack of radio. Right, so pump now. Three, three, one, two, three, then hot long one. And hold it down. Hold it down. Oh, perfect. And one final time. A couple of bubbles still in there, so do it one more time. One last time. No. Perfect. That's good. No, you can now leave. You're free to go. Yes. So there we go. Old, which is looking pretty dreadful, versus new, which looks lovely and shiny. So let's get the wheel on and the old one weighed in. And the car is pretty much done. Right, finishing touches. Let's put, oh, that's much quieter. Whack that on there. Then the car sounds far more civilised. I'll get a screwdriver on that and tidy that down. And uh, now somewhere, I'm not 100% sure where, are two little screws that hold this airbox to the side of the battery tray. They will turn up. One other thing which is bugging me. This door handle. Ah. Keeps getting stuck. Face full of stuff, and that's better ish. I'll do all these hinges as well while I'm here because it really doesn't hurt. And these boot hinge areas are a rust trap, apparently, as well. So I'm lucky this has got no issues here at all. So I will wax all this area next time I wash it. All right, finally, let's give this thing the droop test like we did before we changed the caliper. So park up the top of the hill. So car into neutral, feet off the pedals. Back we go. Not into the Crown Vic, that would be a bad thing to do. I'm gonna call that fixed. So there we have it, the 200 VI is now fixed as much as I think it needs to be to be MOT'd and road legal and more importantly, safe and fun. We've taken the engine apart, we've skimmed the head, we've done the valve gear, uh, we've put a new head gasket in it, new timing belt, all that kind of major, major service stuff, four new tires, tightened up the exhaust to stop those leaks. I can't remember if I changed these wipers or not, they look pretty fresh, I've honestly forgotten if I did or not. Um, what else have we done? Changed some light bulbs, did I just say new tyres, changed that brake caliper, done the CV boot. Do you know what I think 
it's all there. Barring anything like emissions or handbrake, like on the Touring, then we'll be good to go with this car. Now, I don't think I'll be able to find time between after the Easter holiday and next weekend to get this booked in for an MOT. So it probably won't be coming to POL, Prada Longbridge, next weekend. I'll probably give that honour, if you like, to the Tourer. Because if I do MOT it, I've got to tax it as well. And then we're like four days at the end of the month. And I hate taxing a car four or five days before the end of the month because you're paying a full month tax for less than a week and I really don't like doing that. So it'll probably be the Tourer coming to Birmingham next weekend, but this thing will be on the road from the first, assuming we can get the MOT booked in and of course passed. Oh yeah, we polished these headlights. They look a bit yellow again now, but uh, yeah, they're significantly better than they were. I think we'll have to put some new ones of those on just to make it look fresh because the front end needs painting, the back corner needs popping out and painting where it's had a scrape. Yeah, just a bit of attention from a body shop and the car is basically there and refurbishing these alloys. Oh, I can't wait to drive this thing. Right, if you've enjoyed this, please, as always, hit like and subscribe, as we always say on YouTube. And if you want to head over to the Furious Driving uh, store, then have a look at mugs, t-shirts, hats, etc. And this was a remarkably easy brake caliper change, but that is a lot to do with having the right tools. And if you like the look of any of the tools I was using, then head over to the Amazon affiliate store linked in the description below to see the stuff I've been using today. Right. Join me again next time where I think I might actually go and have a go at the, uh, the P6 V8, although there is a couple of things on the Crown Vic I want to get on with as well. Who knows what I feel like. Right, see you again soon. Take care. Thanks for watching.